All right, so in this lesson, uh, we're going to be looking at confidence intervals uh, for pop or sample means. OK, so um, so these are called uh, T procedures. All right, so yeah, another letter, and another distribution, uh, but it's also similar to um, the normal distribution and the Z distribution as well. All right, so um, yeah, so there's just a slight adjustment that needs to may be made when you're going from uh, sample to uh, draw conclusions or inferences about the uh, the population means. All right. So uh, this first little box here, just a little recall um, that the sample distribution for sample means. All right. So for population, the given mean uh, mu and standard deviation sigma. Uh, just remember the population or the mean of the uh, sample means. The mean of the sample means is going to equal the population mean. And the standard deviation of the um, sample means is going to equal uh, the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. OK, so if you guys recall that, yeah, this uh, the standard deviation of the averages of the samples are going to be uh, smaller than uh, the actual true population mean because or sorry, true population standard deviation because uh, uh, sample means generally are more clustered closer to the uh, the true population mean. All right. And again, the sample size here, we want n is being greater than or equal to 30. All right. So, and then from the last lesson, we have this confidence interval. So remember that's the uh, estimate or point estimate plus or minus the margin of error. Or in other words, uh, it's an estimate plus or minus what we call a critical value times the standard error. Okay. So when it comes to population or confidence intervals for means, uh, we have this formula here. All right, so our estimate or point estimate is X bar. All right, so our sample uh, mean. And then our critical value is actually follows what we call a T distribution. And we'll go through how to look up your critical value with a T chart. Um, and then notice here that, yeah, my standard deviation here, the S here is the standard deviation of the sample. Um, so notice, yeah, it got replaced with the population standard deviation because obviously we that's what we're trying to find if we can find, if we knew the population standard deviation then we would know the population mean and therefore we wouldn't really have to do a confidence interval, if that makes sense all right so again the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample n which is the sample size okay so it's a little blabbing uh but anyways t star or the critical value here the t distribution depends on uh, two things okay so it's the confidence level that we're looking for as well as what they call the degrees of freedom okay and degrees of freedom um without getting too much into what that definition means it's basically your sample size minus one okay the reason it's minus one is because um you kind of like um you want one less than your actual sample size because that's what you're measuring the spreads against if that makes sense uh, or even if it doesn't make sense, just remember degrees of freedom is equal to n minus one. All right. Um, S is our sample standard deviation because right? we do not know what the true population standard deviation is, and n is our sample size. All right. So this little note here says uh, since the standard deviation of the sample S tends to underestimate or be smaller than the actual true population standard deviation. Uh, the reason for that is the reason it tends to be smaller is because obviously your sample is going to be have less um, um, components than the actual true population because we're just taking a poor portion of the population. All right, so what that tends to happen is that your sample standard deviation is going to be um, smaller than the true population standard deviation. All right, so we need to use a larger critical value, uh, which in this case is called T. All right, so it's going to be larger than Z. Uh, in order to capture the population mean as often as we say it will. Okay, so in other words, just to be more accurate, uh, you know, since our sample size is you know smaller than the actual total population, um, our, we need to use a larger critical value. All right? And what's happened is, the, yeah, we come up with a chart. Uh, so this is a t-table. All right, so it looks very similar to um, a, uh, a z-table, I guess. Uh, what you need to want to notice is that down the side here are the degrees of freedom, which is dependent on your sample size. And then across the top here, actually, let's scroll down here. 
across the bottom here are your confidence levels, right? So 90% confidence le level. Uh, this T thing, this, these numbers here just kind of, uh, you know, if you start breaking up the, uh, since we're looking for the middle and so on. Um, so, yeah, so for, for example, let's say 80%, no, so let's go with the 90% confidence uh, level. I scroll that back up. Uh, the reason it says T0.95 is, again, uh, if this middle percent we're looking for is 90%, uh, then this is actually going to be 5% on this side, 5% on this side. So what it means by T, um, again, this was, this column was the 90% confidence of the interval. Um, so the, what it means by T.95 is that from here below, 95 percent so right uh but anyways you can be pretty much just um uh kind of like okay actually and then uh here you'll see it where it says one tail so each tail is five percent right which i put here and the two tails when you add them together is ten percent right so that's why um yeah so the ten percent 100 percent minus this ten percent is your 90 percent confidence interval and then it's five percent in each tail so that's why the t subscript 95 all right, but anyways, all that being said, uh, the only thing, basically what you're going to be doing here is you're going to be looking at the confidence level down here and then the sample size or degrees of freedom, and then we'll find the number. So you basically ignore the, the heading up here. It's just a little bit more, I guess, description. Okay, so let's just go to an example here. Um, so a large airline is interested in determining the average number of unoccupied seats for all its flights. Uh, it selects a simple random survey. Schools should say sample. Uh, simple round random sample of 81 flights and determines the average number of unoccupied seats for the sample is 12.5 seats with a standard deviation of 3.9 seats, and we want to construct a 95% confidence interval for the true number of unoccupied seats for all flights. OK, so let's break this down. Uh, first off, our, we have a simple random sample of 81 flights. Right? So n is going to equal 81. So right away, I'm just going to write down the degrees of freedom. Which is going to be 81 minus 1, which is 80. OK, so there's 80 degrees of freedom um, in our sample. Uh, the average number was 12.5, so that's saying that x bar is equal to 12.5, and it also in our sample, our standard deviation was 3.9. All right, so oh, actually, what about sigma? It's s here. So again, we're dealing with the sample standard deviation. All right, so this is actually enough information for us to. Um, uh, calculate a 95% confidence interval. So, um, so for 95% confidence interval, um, with a, I'll go degrees of freedom, so DOF of equaling 80, we're going to have to look it up in our uh, T table. So T star is going to equal, a critical value is going to equal. All right, so um, so I'm just going to scroll back up here. So I want a 95% confidence interval. So I'm going to go up this column, and I'm going to look up uh, 80 degrees of freedom is right here. Okay, so if I go across, you can see that it is going to be uh, 1.99. So yeah, so 1.99 is my uh, critical value here, T value. All right, so again, what you'll notice here, and I'll scroll it back here, is just going back to this previous point here where, you know, our standard deviation tends to underestimate. So the smaller the sample size, uh, the wider we need our, or the larger we need a critical value. Right? So if you notice here that, um, let's scroll down here. So remember for the 95% confidence interval, if we knew the population standard deviation, we would use the Z value of 1.96, all right? And then hopefully these other numbers look familiar. 1.64 for 90% confidence interval, as well as 2.576 for 99% confidence interval. So if you remember, those were like the three most common confidence intervals. Um, so you see here that along the side here, we've got the number of degrees of freedom. 
as the degrees of freedom get smaller, or in other words, as the sample size gets smaller, uh, you'll see that the critical values have to get larger. So they get slightly larger and larger. All right, so they worked out this table. Um, and so these are the new kind of critical values uh, dependent on your degrees of freedom, which means that it depends on uh, your sample size. All right, so again, smaller the sample, um, the more, I guess, um, say, the, the uh, more inaccurate or more smaller your standard deviation sample is from the actual true standard deviation of the population. All right, so kind of blab away there. Um, all right, so uh, let's just okay. So let's just work this out here. Uh, so for our 95% confidence interval, uh, the formula for confidence interval was again x bar uh, plus or minus a t star times uh, s divided by the square root of m. So this is um, then the formula. Scroll up here, this one right here. So x bar plus or minus t star times s over square root of m. Right. So if you substitute the values that we're working with here, our sample mean was 12.5, we're going to plus or minus our t critical value, which is 1.99 times uh, our sample standard deviation, which is 3.9, divided by uh, the square root of our sample size, which is 81. OK, so this should. Give us our. Um, should give us our uh, confidence interval. All right, so again, just a little review. I'm just going to break this down. Um, so this is again our standard error. Uh, when we punch in 3.9 divided by the square root of 81. So let's just punch that in. It's a 3.9. Divided by the square root of 81. Well, square root of 81 is just nine, so I'm just going to put that in. All right, so we get 0 0.433 repeating. So, all right, so um, as we work through this, uh, I'm going to save the rounding actually to the end. So I'm going to multiply this by 1.99. All right, so we get 12. 0.5 plus or minus 0 0.862. All right. Okay, so this is going to equal, and so I'm going to take the lower bound there, or the lower number. So 12.5 minus 0.862. All right, so. Uh, we get 11.6, you know what, uh, yeah, 11.638 That's our lower value. And our upper value, let's punch that in, at 12.5 plus 0.862. All right, so we get 13.362. Okay, so um, what this means, if we interpret this, is that we are 95% confident. On fit. I can't spell. On it, condition. <laughs> Let's try that again. Con fit um, that the mean number of occupied unoccupied seats. Ninety-five percent confident that the mean number of unoccupied seats. Um, for all the airlines flights is between uh, eleven point six three eight 
and 13.362. All right. All right, so, um, yeah. All right, so, yeah, so that's how you calculate the confidence intervals. Um, yeah, I guess there's not really much, not much more there to say. All right, so, um, yeah, so the mean average, we can be 95% confident that the mean is between 11.6 and 13.4, I guess. It's. Cool. All right, guys, so that is the um, confidence intervals for sample means.